Hello everyone, so welcome to factorization, one of the biggest chapters that you need to master for grade 9 and 10. If you can master this chapter, you are going to do well, really well. So, we've just come out of the chapter known as products and so by now you are an expert at this because if I had to give you a question like this you know that you would just multiply the x in and that would give you 3x squared minus 2x so let me just write that over here 3x squared minus 2x so this process of going from here to here that is just products you, you're finding the product okay but now in factorization we are going to learn how to take this expression and turn it back into that. That is called factorization. So factorization and doing the product are opposites of one another. They are completely different, okay? So let me, let's practice and I'm gonna show you how this works. It's gonna be a little bit weird at first, but that's how maths is. It's always a bit weird at first. In fact, that's how life is. Things can be strange, but then as you practice it, you become better. And so you must practice, that's all. Once you practice, you become better. Easy as that. So here we have 3x squared minus 6x. So what we need to do is, well, I'm gonna show you a couple of examples and you will start to get an idea of how it works. So. I know that the number 3 can fit into both of these, so I'll take that out in the front. I also know that this one here has two x's and this one has one x. And so I can take out one x because they have that in common, okay? They have one x in common. Then we need to see what is left over. So in this first term, there's still an x left over and then we're going to say minus 2. Now, if it feels a little weird right now, of course it will. It's a brand new topic. Now, this is the answer, but let me prove it to you. If I gave you this question and I said, please find the product, you would multiply this in, and that would give you 3x squared. You would then multiply this in, and that would give you minus 6x. And so we are back at the original question. And so if you are asked to factorize 3x squared minus 6x, this is the answer. Let's practice a lot of examples and you'll start to become more familiar. So with this one, the biggest number that they have in common is a 10. They have two x's in common, then what will be left? Okay, so for this one, you would still be left with a two and there's still one more x left over. With this one, there's nothing left over, so you just say minus one. Let's see if this works out. So if you had to multiply this back, that would give you 20x to the power of 3 minus 10x squared, which is what we originally had. So the answer is this over here. If you want, you can pause the video and try this yourself. So the number 16 and 12, the largest number, or the largest multiple that they have well, the, not multiple, the largest factor that they both have is a 4. Then there are three x's in common, because this one has three x's, this one has 4, and so they at least have three x's in common. Now let's see what's left over. Well, there will be a 4 left over here and an x, and then this will just be minus 3. Because if I had to multiply this back, you would get 16x4 and 12x3. So the answer is that over there. Okay, so with number one, the largest number that, well, the largest factor of both of those is the number 20. This one has one x, this one has three. So how many do they have in common? They share one x in common. And so what will we be left with in the first term? Well, only an x squared and then minus two. How do I know that that's correct? Because if I had to multiply this back, that would give you 20x3. And if I had to multiply this, you would get 40x. The next one, the largest number in common between a 8 and a 2 is a 2. Then this one has 2x's, this one has 4, and so they can at least have 2 in common. We will then be left with 4x2 minus 1. Now, if there are any of you who are watching this for revision, then you will already know a factorizing method called difference of squares. And so technically this one could go further. 
but I'm just going to pretend that you are getting started with factorizing and so I'm not going to go further with that one for now. I didn't know that that one was actually going to turn into a difference of square. Now in the third one the largest number that can go into both is 10. Let's look at the x's. For the x's there are 2 over there and 1 over there and so how many do they have in common? They've got 1 in common. For the y's there are 2 over there and there's 1 over there so there's 1 y in common. And so what you would be left with is in the first term you'd still have an x and a y. In the second term you'll just say minus 2. Let me show you that in a different way. Now this technique I'm going to show you now, I wouldn't advise you use it all the time because it would take quite long. But 10x squared is the same as 10xx and y squared is yy. 20 is the same as 2 times 10 and then there's xy. So what things are in common? Well there's a 10, they both have an x, and they both have a y. So that is why we take out 10xy. So let's do that quickly. 10 x y. Now what is left? Well in the first term we still have an x and a y so we say x y. In the second term oh we also took that 10 Kevin. So we still have a minus 2 left over over here and that is why we say minus 2. So if you want to use that long method for now just until you become more familiar with it that's absolutely fine. So this will be 8 x x x y y y y minus 2 times 8 because 16 you got to sort of be able to see a common thing between them there's an 8 so then we can say that that is 2 times 8 I'd rather write it like that and then there's two x's and then a y so the number 8 is common so I'll circle that for both of them uh, they have this one has an x so it can go in common with that one this one has an x so it can go in common with that one this y goes with that y. Okay, so that is what we can take out. We're taking out an 8, two x's, see there, and then a y. And that's the same for this one. There's an 8, there's an x squared, and a y. Now we open up our brackets, and what are we left with? Well, we are left with an x and then three y's. So that will be x, y, 3. What are we left with in the first term? Minus 2 like that. For the next one, well straight away you should know that 25 and 10 have the number 5 in common so you're going to break this up into 5 times 5 then 3x's x x x. You see why this method could get really long because if I start saying x10 then you're going to have 10 x's next to each other. Then y y and then 4 w's. Then 10 is going to be 5 times 2. There's 1 x and 3 y's. So let's see what's common. So this 5 is in common with that 5, this x with that x, and then this y with that y, and this y with that y. Then there's nothing else in common. For example, I can't choose this x because then I don't have a matching partner on the other side. And so the common, sorry that y fell away, so the common thing is a 5, an x, and then two of these y's, so that will be y squared, and I'm running out of space. Okay, so I took out a 5xy squared. Now let's see what's left. In the first term, we still have a 5 and then 2x's and 4w's. So that will be 5x squared and then 4w's. In the second term, we still have a 2 and then a y. So that will be minus 2y. And there's your answer. And so let's try to do it without writing out all those numbers like that. So what number can we take out of a 27 and a 9? Well, the large, you can take out 9. You want to take out as much as you can. Now imagine this. It's x, x, x. So 3x's. This one has 4x's. So it would look like x, x, x. This one would be x, 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 x. And so the common ones would be that one goes with that one. That one goes with that one and that one goes with that one. So there's three x's in common, so we take out x3. This one has eight y's, this one has five y's, and so you could imagine that that would be y, 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 and this one is y, 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 y. So they definitely have five in common, because this one goes with that one, this one goes with that one, 
this one goes with that one, this one goes with that one, and this one goes with that one. So there's five of them that are in common, so we take out y5, and now we see what's left over. So there would still be 3 over here, because 3 times 9 is 27. We took out 3x's, this one only had 3x's, so it doesn't have any left. We took out 5y's, so this one would still have 3 left. And there you can even see them over there. Minus, then what do we have left in the next term? Well, there's still an x that's available. And then we took out all of its y's, and so it won't have any y's left, and so this is the final answer.